So how do you get into a position where you are reliving it, but you're not going to f- succumb to that uh, tortured artist trap? Yeah, that's such a good question. I think, and I've I've experienced a lot of this on, well, I won't say a lot, like on TikTok, you know, I get probably 90% is just positive support, love. And then there's the 10%, five of which are like just like troll men on the internet that like are living in their parents' basement. And the other five are like women that I'm clearly triggering something in them. But the one comment that I see a lot is like, God, can't you just move on and like forget about your ex-husband and stop talking about this story? And there's two sides to that coin. One, it's like, no, I'm on TikTok to like sell books and like it's a marketing strategy. So there's that. The other side of the coin is I can laugh and I can talk about this until the fucking cows come home because I'm healed from it. Right. Like it, there's no like reopening old wounds. There's no like – I could sit down with either of my exes and have a long lunch and be like, yo, dude, like crazy shit. What the fuck happened? Let's talk about (laughs) it. Like what was it like for you on your side? Because I'm that disconnected from it. They Both of them truly feel like characters in a story for me now. Um, Javier took a a longer time for me to get there than my ex-husband did. My ex-husband, it was pretty instantaneous. But – it it really, I feel, is a testament to how much work I've put in and how much growth I've done. Um, as far as like leaning into the tortured artist, because like I know there's so many times where people are like, God, can Adele just get her heart broken again? Because like the record that comes after that is going to be <laughs> fucking amazing, uh, which is so fucked up and so sad. But like I also, I get it. But I think now it's just about owning where you're at in the moment. So like, yes, my first book, I wrote it in three months flat because I was like dealing with so much shit. I just needed to dump it out. Like it had to flow out of me. The second book took probably like eight to nine months for me to complete because I was in a very happy, stable relationship going back and kind of reopening a lot of stuff and getting that, you know, was a little more difficult. Um, and now people are like, when's the third book? When's the third book? And I'm like, guys, what What do you want me to write? Like, I'm happy we got married. We're having a baby. Everything's fucking phenomenal. Like, I got to live a little bit more life first before I can do that. But I think whenever you've gone through like the trauma or the incidences or the shit, when you can honor it in a way that you know it's part of your story, but you don't have to go back into the hysteria of it, you know? And Mm -hmm. look, for some people, that's going to take more time and more healing. And for those people that always make those comments of like, why can't you just let it go? Why do you keep talking about it on, you know, online? I think that's bringing up something in them that's being triggered. Like why why are they being triggered that I can't talk about an experience from a very disconnected standpoint, whether it's for marketing or for other people to heal or whatever it's for? Like what is that triggering within you? Mm-hmm. What is the role of forgiveness in all, in all of this and in healing and in heartbreak and in trauma? This is such a hot topic for people. I did an episode – on my podcast like way back in season one on forgiveness and people either go back and listen to it religiously or they're like, fuck you, Gabrielle. (laughs) Like I don't have to forgive anybody. And you don't. You don't have to forgive anyone that you don't want to. However, it is my belief that not forgiving someone only hurts you. Um, And it goes back to what we were talking about earlier that when you're walking around in a certain type of energy, you're going to attract that energy into your life. You don't forgive people for them. Doesn't matter if they deserve it. Doesn't matter like how long it's been. Like you forgive people because you want to elevate yourself and you Mm -hmm. want to, to be vibrating on a higher level to attract and manifest the good shit you deserve into your life. And if you're walking around hating someone and cursing someone, you're not doing that. 
So Mm -hmm. for me, it was never a question of like forgiving the people who have wronged me. Like, you know, and there's different levels of that. Like I had to do work forgiving my dad because like, obviously he didn't mean to die, but like he still left me. Like yes. there, mm-hmm. the the six year old little girl in me was like, no, yeah, like that. There's like a big wound there. Had to forgive my ex husband for, you know, the stuff he did within our marriage, the the actions he took after the book became successful, um, to try and hurt me. Like all of that, I've had to just completely let go of. And did he necessarily deserve that? No, he quite frankly is a piece of shit human. But me walking around like feeling that hate and being like, screw him, like he's an asshole, it's not affecting him at all. It's only bringing my vibration down. And like I care about myself way too much to allow hate to make me come down on a vibrational level. Yeah, there's that quote. I, it's an American, famous American author, and his name is escaping me right now. I've not been sleeping the last few days, so my memory is not as sharp, and I like can't pull my library cards as much as um easily as I typically can. But it's that a- anger is an acid that does more damage to the vessel than it does what it's pour- poured upon, mm. and I truly believe that. I think it's the same yeah. with with jealousy because I think jealousy and anger are very closely tied. Mm-hmm. So the idea that someone you're like, oh, I'm not going to forgive them. You have no idea what they did. I was like, I have literally witnessed some people that have gone through the worst travesties and they have forgiven that person. Like uh, like yeah. one of my really good friends, her name's Candace Mama, and she's um, about to do her second appearance on my podcast. And I just adore this woman so much. She was living in an apartheid state in Africa. And this man had murdered her father, like murdered oh. him very violently. And after the arraignment and after the trial, like she hugged him and she was like, I forgive mm. you. Like I love, and she mm. got to love, like, you know what I mean? Like true embrace yeah. with this man. And yeah. there's not much worse that we right. can do to another human right than taking their life like that's pretty fucking intense and she I'm sure it wasn't easy for her and she's talked publicly about this a lot but it's always possible and you're holding on to that like you will get start getting sick you can start gaining weight you'll start noticing that like your life starts getting very dark and like you said you deserve so much more than that so it's not about the other person at all although it can be like if you want to get if you want to really see how far you can push this thing like can I get to love with the person that has done the worst thing to me like what a beautiful gift what a beautiful superpower that you can have so yeah I see this movement for like unfair forgiveness right and it's like i'm the strong woman i'm gonna, i'm going to have my boundary that's not a boundary like that's a delusion mhm yeah mm-hmm. and there's there's a way to have boundaries and forgiveness at the same time absolutely like, look, you don't have to reach out to the person and no. be like hey i'd love to take you out for tea mm-hmm. <laughs> you know right. like it doesn't it doesn't have to go that far mm-hmm. um as long as you are not walking around with hate in your heart and shit clogging down your energy. That's all that we're aiming for. God bless that woman for being able to do that. That's huge. But you're absolutely right. Like if you look at the word disease, it's dis-ease. So when you have dis-ease within yourself, within your heart, within your spirit, you will eventually create disease within yourself. Mm You are going to get sick. You are going to like – it's not going to be a good situation for you whether that happens soon or 20 years down the road. Like don't allow it to tank your energy because someone wronged you. And I did this one episode on the podcast that really like allowed me to tap into like having things make sense a little more and it was – with this spiritual guide who basically like talks about soul contracts a lot. Mm -hmm. And the way she described it was like, okay, so everybody's up there, like where whatever you believe, like heaven, the universe, whatever. We're all up there before we come down to this, like this life, this body. And we have this kind of set path of the the things we're going to learn, what we're going to do, the stories that we're going to write, the lessons we're going to, you know, um, and, the people that are up there are like, okay, I need this person to be this this villain in my story. And the people up there are like, okay, I'll do that for you in this life. And it's usually the people that love you the most 
that are mm. going to be willing to take that role on because it's such a shitty, heavy role and they want to like help you learn that lesson. And you're like, okay, great. And you're like, ooh, and I have to learn this lesson this time around. And someone's like, I'll do that for you. And you all get on a bus and you come down here and forget that the plan was ever made. And then all of this stuff starts happening. And if you can look at the people in your life, like that I had a soul contract with my dad, that he had to leave at that age because it was going to set me on this path to learning this huge life lesson of abandonment that I needed to learn because of whatever happened in a previous life. Sorry, I know we're getting a little woo-woo, guys, but... My audience is used to it. You're in good okay, company. Great. Love yeah. it. <laughs> um, and, you know, and that like my ex-husband, like that he was the person that came in to like really set me off on on this like different path and that Javier came in to be like blow up my world and send me to Europe by myself. I would have never ended up on that trip without those two things happening in that domino effect. So when you can look at the people that have hurt you and be like, yeah, it sucks and it was horrible and like there was trauma because of it or like whatever the fallout is, but it it happened because I needed to learn the lessons and thank God that those people chose to come forward and help me learn that and be that teacher for me. It kind of gives you a little bit more peace in the fucked up shit that happens in our life. <laughs> <laughs> 